Now let's go back. Uh, Every time I'm... What's up, everybody? I should be live now. Why, why am I here? Let's check out Zook Ride's website real quick. They had a little update lately. They got a, a sale going on on 3 Series and on the... Uh, the Noor combo with the Florida Fishing Products Reel. Got you a nice discount on those. They also have fly rods, tuna rods, surf rods. What's up, Justin? What's up, Danny? What's up, Nate? Yeah, work is, uh, is no fun. I got out this weekend. I went and did uh, the Middle East Challenge this Saturday with Bayou Coast Kayak Club. I ended up, uh, it was a struggle. I ended up catching two reds, though. And my brother, he did it with me. He ended up catching, he caught three reds, but two of his were undersized. So he ended up not even weighing his fish. I ended up in like 25th place, which is horrible. <laughs> not what I was trying to get. Yeah, Danny, being able to have some range is, is going to be a game changer for you. But he also opens up a lot more ways to mess up. Like, I found, like, in a kayak, I don't make as many mistakes as I make in the boat. Like, I'll spend all day driving the boat around. In the kayak, I'll just fish my way down the entire bank and catch fish the whole way. Whereas in the boat, I'll just pass that bank up, you know. What's up, Lil? Justin caught some reds and bass in Delacro. That's good to know. How's the water looking in Delacro, Justin? That doesn't work. Hmm. Yeah, I fished the uh, Melamis Challenge this past Saturday. I fished... Uh, Right out of Chef Pass yesterday, and I caught a couple bass. And then today I went sockley fishing, and I caught two sockley and a bunch of perch. Sockley fishing is what I've been wanting to focus on the last few days, and I finally got out today, and it was tough. Sockley is frustrating. That was like one of my least favorite <laughs> fish. What up, Matt? What up, Rat Red? Yeah, I've been fishing, and uh, I haven't been catching much. I've been on like a two fish, a two fish quota. All right, but yeah, for Middle Miss Challenge, I fished. We fished Leeville. Let's see. Let's go back to the map. We fished around Leeville. It was 137 people out there. What's up, Colin? Yeah, 137 people came down to Leeville. For the minimalist challenge. And uh, they gave us a bag of baits. Everybody got the same bag of baits. It was uh, a top water. They gave us three jig heads, uh, a quarter ounce, a three eight ounce, and a half ounce. And then they also gave us three um, soft plastics, which I think was like a hollow body swim bait, like a three or four inch hollow body swim bait, a four inch uh, ring paddle tail, and a like a like a um, a bass bait. What was it? Like a little crawfish green pumpkin bass bait. And we had to go out and see if we could catch 15 trout and three reds and 10 flounder with that. Yeah, I hate fishing Leeville. Minimalist challenge is horrible. But uh, this is the path me and my brother took roughly. I'm not going to show exactly where we fished or anything, but this was like, we went like 12 miles. I caught two fish the whole day. It was rough. I caught my first fish about 8 o'clock on the, uh, well, first of all, at about 7 o'clock in the morning, I had my little other pedal tail they gave me with the lightest jig head, and I dropped that in the water like 7 o'clock in the morning. So I was down to like two two jig heads and a top water. And uh, I used the, the, the 
four inch hollow body swim bait and I was able to catch my two reds on that. About eight o'clock in the morning I caught my first one, which is like a nice 24 incher, which was a solid fish. If I could have caught two more like that, I'd have been all right. But uh I caught that one and then probably about eleven thirty I caught my second one down here somewhere. But uh there's some weird stuff going on at Middle Miss Challenge. I don't know if anybody if Matt, if you saw it while you were out there, or, or Colin, they had like a weird worm hatch going on. And uh, if you looked in the water, like right at daybreak, there was like worms all over the surface of the water and they were swimming. And I knew something had to be eating them, but uh, we didn't catch any while we were looking at the worms. But I talked to a guy, I talked to, uh, oh man, why is this dude's name is evading me now? Ah. Uh, I talked to what's his name, and uh, he told me that he talked to his buddy, and he said that it was a uh, he said that it was something called a bristle worm hatch, and uh, the bristle worm is a, a offshore marine worm, and they get like two feet long, and they come inshore and breed, and then all the babies hatch, and they migrate out with the strong falling tides. Yeah, man, it was like right at right at daybreak. If you looked in the water, there was just millions of worms just swimming in the water. But um, there were a bunch of worms. They all like two inches, one and a half, two inches just swimming in the water. They all looked like perfect little baits. I knew something had to be feeding on them. But uh, what was I trying to say? After I went home and cleaned my fish, I, I looked in the stomach and all both of those reds that I caught were full of those worms. So I don't know if that messed up the bite and made it tough to catch fish, but those bristle worms were out at night I'm thinking because once the sun got higher in the sky they disappeared so that led me to uh, thinking about so lunar theory which is the title of this video but um what I'm trying to say so yeah that's why I that's what made me prompted me to start researching so lunar theory understanding what that meant and actually that kind of explains some of the uh Reason why I guess we didn't catch fish early. I don't know. Maybe it did. Maybe it didn't. It's a theory. What's up, Kenneth? What's up, Josh? Welcome, everybody new who just came in. But uh, who who won? Clayton won. Clayton Schilling won. He had a crazy stringer. He had nine trout, three big reds, and uh. And uh, he was able to take first place with a pretty impressive stringer. And uh, what else? What else happened? I forgot what Big Red was. Big Red was like a seven pound something redfish. And then the the spotted red, the leopard red was a is pretty impressive. It had 29 spots on it. So whoever caught that was cashed in big time, got lucky. What's up, Charles? Welcome back again. Nothing but catfish. Man, that's rough. I haven't caught a catfish in months. I usually don't catch catfish in the winter time. That's weird. Hey, what's happening, Cajun Indian? Nice meeting y'all out there yesterday. So yeah, that was my Saturday. I fished the tournament. Sunday, I took the day off. Yeah, Brandon Barton got second, and he caught all his fish early, which is kind of interesting because everybody else I talked to struggled throughout the day. They didn't really catch them early or late. They kind of had to grind out for them. He just got, I guess he knew the right spot to go to or something. But uh, what was that? Monday, which was yesterday, I went fishing in the uh, Lake Pontchartrain Basin. I met up with a bunch of guys. They were out there in the kayaks. I got a little bit of a late start, but they started ahead of me, and they caught some nice trout in this uh, deeper bayou. I think all of them had about five or six trout when I got out there about eight o'clock. Uh, 8 30 9 o'clock uh, I ended up fishing out there for a couple more hours after that and I caught uh, three bass that video is coming out soon I'm almost done with that one so maybe look for that one tomorrow but I caught my three bass on my minimalist challenge baits I uh, I didn't take anything off from minimalist challenge I kept them on my line and uh, and I caught yeah 7.5 red was big red but yeah, I used my Middle Miss Challenge baits and caught some bass yesterday. And then today I went out and uh, I went to my little secret soccer league spot. I'm not going to tell y'all where it's at, but it ain't worth it anyway. I only caught two soccer league today. 
And uh, that video might come out Friday or something like that. So stay tuned for that. John Miller. Where's John Miller? I think he's been fishing lately. I saw him on Facebook. He went fishing this past weekend. So maybe he has a video coming out soon. Lol. I talked to him. He was supposed to be going today. So he's uh, he's been fishing. He hasn't moved away. He's still fishing. I guess he's just busy with work like everybody else, you know. The holidays, work came up. Not much fishing was going on. Yeah, Cajun Indian. I know how it is, man. You get you get out there, you want to catch fish. That's the that's the main objective. All right, what are we gonna talk about? So lunar theory is something I don't even really know about. But uh this past weekend's events with the worms got me thinking about it. I didn't know what I didn't really know what it was before the other day. I, I did some research. And basically what Sol Luna theory is is just how the the moon the moon's orbit affects uh fish and animal activity, which is kind of interesting. I, it's not really science. It's just pseudoscience, but there's a lot of anecdotal evidence. There's a lot of people who have experienced uh different things and noticed how when the moon is in certain places, the fish will bite or the, the fish will be more active. But it's not to say that you go, you know, you base your times when you go fishing off of this. If, if you got a time to go, don't even worry about what the tide is doing or the, the moon is doing. Just go fishing and you'll, you'll probably still catch fish. What's up, Anthony? Yeah, Red Red, I don't, I don't want to give away my, uh, my soccer lay spots. They, they could get overrun pretty easily. So Luna table, yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. I don't know. I don't trust it, but it's interesting. And a lot of uh, well-known fishermen and guys that I respect talk about it a lot, and they put a lot of credence into it. I don't think it's the end-all, be-all. I don't think it's like a magic bullet that's going to catch you fish. But I think that maybe it will get you another bite or two if you pay attention to it. But I um I watched the video and there's a guy, he was like a professional fisherman. He was talking about it. He said he didn't pay attention to it because he didn't want knowing the good times or like the major periods and the minor periods to affect his thinking while he was out there. He wanted to fish hard no matter what when he was in a tournament. So he didn't really pay attention to it when he was in tournaments. But when he um when he practiced and when he when he was just fishing for fun, he would uh, you know, just kind of keep tabs on it. He said that he thought that he caught more fish during it. But basically what it is is that the moon makes an orbit around Earth. And when the moon is directly above you, overhead, and directly underfoot, that's a major feeding time. And those major feeding times also coincide with high tides. So the moon is, is, all, is always affecting us, especially in, in the marsh, because we always have tidal movement. So even if you don't believe in like the major feeding times and periods and all that, it's still, the moon is still moving the water and, and making the tide move. Oh man, I forgot to turn my yellow pins off. Thanks for reminding me, Danny. Oh no, that's Caleb. Thanks for reminding me, Caleb. I forgot to turn my points off. Y'all be poaching my spots and stuff. <laughs> but, uh, Let's see, where we at? Oh, that ain't right. oh, that's it right there. So, yeah, this is just a, a lunar chart on Louisiana Sportsman for Louisiana. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So, if you got a chance to go fishing, Cajun Indian, just go fishing. Like, don't worry about any of this stuff. But if you're going to be out there, maybe it makes sense to know when the tide is going to fall. To know when, to know when the the major period is going to be, when moonrise, moonset is going to be. That's the minor periods. But uh, but to know when it's going to happen, maybe you'll stay out there an extra hour if you know that the major is coming up, and that will catch you more fish, you know. So, but uh, what I was looking at was basically like if you're big trout fishing or big bass fishing, there's a lot of people who who ascribe by this or subscribe to this theory that the bigger fish are going to feed 
and be more active during these periods. And so there is, has been some studies done and uh, they have done a lot of uh, like backwards research where they've looked at when uh, record fish were caught and they've compared it back to when the major periods and the minors were done. And there has been some correlation found, but I'm sure there's evidence that it isn't. I don't know. This, this stuff is like real pseudo. But real pseudoscience-y. And I'm more of a science guy. I like to have some like provable stuff, but I don't know. Sometimes things can't be easily proven. And and there is something to it. If so many people can say that this is they've observed these things, maybe it is true. But according to this, when the moon is overhead, so if you're looking at this chart. What's today? The 6th. Wednesday the 6th. So tomorrow, let's look at tomorrow. Thursday the 7th. The best time to fish tomorrow, according to this, is going to be from 1.41 p.m. to 3.29 p.m. So this is not to say that you go fishing at these exact times. Let's say that once you get out there, you're probably going to get more bites during this time. But I don't know. What's up, fish killer? But I don't know. I, it, this is not. But it, it's still. This is on a perfect day. Maybe you will see a, a uptick in fishing. And this is also going to be the times when fish are going to be facing bait and being most active. But people don't know if it's the fish that are reacting to the moon, or they think that it's like invertebrates, like uh, the oysters or the shrimp, stuff like that, that react to and can sense the moon the moon's effects on the water. But I also think it has a lot to do with tidal movement as well. All right, Cajun, and have a good night, man. Anybody anybody follow the, the, the lunar charts? You live in Chicago? Never caught a red one in New Orleans. No, 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 no. Yeah, if you want to catch a red man, maybe get out of Bayou St. John, go try and find the try and find the uh the, the seawall. Fish off the seawall, maybe. You'll catch a red off of there, maybe. Nobody follows it? I don't know, man. I'm gonna start paying attention to when I go fishing. I'm gonna start following seeing like when I catch fish, when I catch my biggest fish of the day. Cause it does seem like certain times when I go fishing, I'll hit a a patch or like there'll be like a nice window where I'll catch fish and then it'll turn off or something will change but I don't know there's so many different factors to when fish will bite like you got weather you got the wind you got the tide you got uh you know so many different facts the water color the water you know the visibility the, the bait avail availability all those things play into it so if you're going to pay attention to all that then you have to know when all this stuff is going on. Otherwise, I don't know. There'll be so much to think about. Just fish the conditions of the day. You're right, Jace. That's true. See, I don't know. But I follow this guy, um, um, Chris Bush from the Speckled Truth. He, he subscribes to this and he thinks that Bigger fish are easier to catch during these periods. So, so that's what that's that's where that's where my my interest was peaked because I I want to catch some big trout. I want to be a a better big trout fisherman. So then I was like, all right. So then I saw uh, the worms were in the water. And from what I from what I was reading, they're saying like, all right, if the moon is out at night and you have a full moon, fish are gonna feed at night because they can see easier. Exact, usually after a full moon. But do you fish the morning after a full moon? Because from what I understand is, the morning after a full moon, the fish have been feeding all night. That's the anecdotal evidence I've heard. 
So if they're feeding all night, they're going to be less apt to feed that following morning. So you're going to go and fishing is going to be tough after a full moon. But also during a full moon, you're going to have your strongest tides and, and the most water movement. And, and in the marsh, that's a, a major factor in catching fish. So you think the tide is more effect more is has more effect on fishing than the moon phase or the moon? It does sound crazy when you think about it. But when you think about it though, bass spawn during after the full moon or on a full moon. Exactly. This this does have uh some some basis in science though. If you think about it, like if the full moon is out at night. The water, the, the water is more illuminated because there's more light from the moon. So the fish will be able to see and eat all night. But if it's like a new moon and there's no light, the fish won't, you know, won't be able to feed. So they, they'll be waiting for the sun to come up and see, you know, to see the, the prey. So yeah, that is that is based in, in science, I guess, maybe. More so than just the fish feel when the moon is rotating around the earth. I don't know. What else I had read about this stuff that was interesting? Well, according to this, though, if you... Yeah, that's what I... I me either. I don't think I've had much, much experience or much... Uh, Many catches after the full moon. But if you go at night, I sort of this is what I've been reading also. If you go at night during a full moon, you you'll have a really good chance of catching a big fish. Because that's when the, the bigger fish are gonna be more apt to feed at night. Because they're once you get so big, it makes uh the prey can see the bigger fish as they're as they're swimming through the water. And so they can't sneak up on anything as easy as a smaller fish can. So they'll use the cover of darkness to, to sneak up and feed, especially if they can. Oh, is that what happened, Danny? We fished after a full moon that, that, that day on Saturday? See? Maybe there is something to this moon stuff. Exactly, you're right, Lowell. So yeah, the bigger the bigger fish can can Do I keep a fishing log of times and places? No, I want to get better at that. I usually keep a fishing log of um, of what I catch and where I caught it, but I never would keep details of like what the weather was, what the wind was, what the tide was. So, yeah, I want to I want to get better at keeping a tide chart, keeping a uh, keeping a wind a wind chart, so that I can know what I. Uh, what what the conditions were when I caught the fish, Chris? Yeah, I think tide is probably more more tide is probably more important than the moon's position in the sky. But I don't know. You never you know I don't know. I'm going to try to pay attention to it now. I'm going to see what I catch during the majors and the minors if I'm out there. I'm not going to I'm not going to go fishing because there's a major at that time, but I'll be out there anyway. And that's the best way to catch fish is just to be out there and casting your line in the water. If your line ain't in the water, you're not going to catch anything. Oh, I still got all my points on. What am I doing? Yeah, Chris, when you going fishing, man, do you keep a charter like when you don't go fishing? Yeah, I plan on, I think I'm going to go try to sneak out tomorrow morning. I'm going to try to sneak out tomorrow morning and go do some more soccer lake fishing. Today did not cure my hankering for soccer lake.
I'm gonna go try out here in White Kitchen. Somebody told me he had some fish in this area. I don't know if they were talking about in the river itself or in the pond. I don't know. I'll probably go try both. Anybody got any other questions about fishing? I don't know. So Luna theory is whack. What about uh? What y'all think about the bar bar barometric pressure? Do y'all follow the barometric pressure when y'all go fishing? Because everything I read about that online said that that's a hoax. That's like really doesn't make a difference. You going to pack tomorrow? What up, Goober? I might have a hobby for you, Goober. If you uh, want well, to message me on Facebook, I got a uh, revolt. A hobby revolt. There's a front coming. Where's the front coming? I had not checked the weather at all. I haven't been paying attention. Probably go sock lay fishing before the front comes. <laughs> yeah, Chris. Can't catch if you don't go fishing, man. The pressure drop. So you heard that? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Do you, do you, does anybody have any uh, any stories about the pressure falling? I know like before front, the pressure is supposed to be falling. And that is good fishing. But can the fish sense that the pressure is falling? Can the fish sense that the weather is changing? Like one article I read, they said that... Um, if the fish changes depth by like three feet, it's changing its pressure more than the weather could ever change the, the atmospheric pressure and, and more than they could ever feel from just the atmospheric pressure itself. So like say you drop in a swimming pool, a deep pool, and you feel like your ear is popping, that pressure is greater than any pressure that the uh, that the, that a storm could change the weather by. But is it because the fish know that the weather's changing that they feed and that they know that maybe like the water's gonna get dirty or something like that? That's what I'll be asking. That's what I'll be trying to figure out. Like, why? What makes them do that? Danny says, fish feel the barometric pressure. The bite turns on an hour before a storm. But what about after the storm? So that after the storm, the pressure goes up. Do the fish continue to, the fish stop feeding, right? That's what I've experienced. After the front, the fish don't feed. But is that because the water's cold, because the sun is sky in the sky, or is that because the pressure is high? Like what? What's the correlation? I think you guys have, uh, Christopher, you guys have convinced me that Lunar activity is just the tide. The tide is the, is, is the lunar activity that makes the fish bite. It's so magical. All that other theory about the position of the moon is not, uh, it's just a theory, just anecdotal evidence. Exactly, Matt. If you're hungry, you're going to eat. If, you, if, if somebody throws a hamburger on the table in front of you, you're probably going to take a bite, right? Yeah, I don't know, man. I, there's something, there's, I don't know, there's something to everything, but I, you can't put too much into it. You just got to go fishing. The fish are going to stay in the water. They're not going to go anywhere. They can't fly. Right, Kirk, that's my, my thought on it. It's like when the front is coming, the fish can feel that pressure. Maybe they can feel that slight pressure change. And they th they know that conditions are going to be tough for the next few days. So they try to feed up so that they're not hungry for the next few days. Just hope they are, man. I, I, I need to go to saltwater fishing, too. I really want to go to sock lake fishing, though. That's what I'm going to do. Pier 90. All 
All right, Goober, I'll message you, man, when I get when I get done. Anybody got any questions? <laughs> we uh we kind of just uh feeling our way through the uh this this chat today. I don't know. Southwest, northwest wind. What about it? Like, I, I just know that west wind makes the water drop, like, pretty much everywhere around here in the marsh. So if you're getting a west wind, you know that the water's going to be low, and you're probably going to get your boat stuck, or that you need to fish deeper areas, especially if you're, like, a red fisherman. The best spot in Levo, I don't know. You got to ask Brandon Barton that. You got to ask Clayton that. Ask somebody who finished at the top of the leaderboard. What's the best spot in the lead of, uh, in Leeville, Matt? Southwest winds is just gonna push all the water out. If you can see like how everything is oriented, if you get wind from the west, it's gonna just push everything. Generally, just push everything down. It's gonna slow. It's gonna drop the water level, especially if you get a falling tide and the wind blowing in the same direction. Everything goes down. Yeah, I know John. John is into all that stuff. That's what makes me think. Like I don't know, he's a scientist. I'll be trying to be scientific like him, instead of just banging my head against the wall and just keep casting and keep casting and keep casting. Maybe I can make a make figure out some kind of pattern and catch fish every time I go. An old man once told Christopher that most fish all they do is follow food. Whatever the bait fish are doing, that's what the fish are. That's what the predators are. I guess that's what he's saying. So he's saying just follow the bait. If you know how to find bait, you know how to find the, the predators. That's good. Because, yeah, finding bait is tough. So in a northwest wind in, where are you, Michigan, Carl? A northwest wind in Michigan is going to blow water in? Because, yeah, down here, a south wind, a southeast wind, you can see it. The gulf is out here to the east, southeast, especially on this side of the Mississippi River. It's just going to blow water in, raise the water level. Exactly, yeah, the bait fish are, are usually weaker swimmers, Christopher. So the predators are, are strong swimmers. They can deal with a lot of different, uh, you know, strong tides and strong wave action and dirty water but the bait fish are usually a lot weaker so maybe um maybe the the predators are just following the bait fish whatever the bait fish are doing that's what they're going to do kirk says the old texaco field across from la1 all right we got a we got a bob goose fan in here <laughs> Texaco field. I'm fishing with live blue minnows. Texaco field is right over here. Yeah, I think I did see like most of the people who were high on the leaderboard come from this direction. I've never had that much success on that side. I don't know. Do fish have to eat every day? I think they do. I think the fish probably does eat every day. Yeah, Pete, if you're on the east side of the river, a west wind is, is deadly. West wind is a killer. But I, uh, apparently, according to Vic, if you're on the west bank, a west wind has the opposite effect. It's going to blow water in from the gulf on the west bank of the river. So if you fish the west side, yeah, Danny, but that's easy. If you can see the bait, if you can see it on the surface, that's easy. If you can't see the fish, that's the problem. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like when, a, when you don't see activity, where are the fish? What are they doing? How do you catch them? 
I think you just need to slow down. When you're not seeing activity, when you're not seeing fish chasing on the surface, you're not seeing birds flying, you need to slow down your presentation. You need to focus on where you actually cast. You need to make pinpoint casts and figure out exactly where the fish are holding and drag a bait in front of their mouth. Yeah, I think a fish is going to take the opportunity to eat whenever it can, though, in some yet. Like, if you, if you had to survive like that, if you saw some food, you would eat it when you had the chance, especially when you're, you know, living in a, when everything's uncertain. You're going to take the opportunity to eat when you can. So I think fish do eat every day. Unless they eat like an extremely large meal. And that, that's probably rare that they eat something huge. I'm pretty sure big fish eat a lot of small baits all day long if it's easy for them to get to them. All right, guys, I need some topics to talk about for next week. Y'all got to give me some, some stuff. What do you want to hear me talk about? What you guys want to discuss next week? I mean, conditions make it harder for them to feed, though. Like, if the water's dirty, they're not going to be able to see as far in the water. You know, they're not going to be able to see as far away from them. So they're going to they're gonna have a harder time finding your lure or finding bait. So you're going to have to hit them on the head. Christopher went on a guided striper fish, and the guy said, strippers are holding 50 feet tall. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty intuitive. That's why that guy's a guide. That's why I'm not a guide. I'm still trying to learn that type of stuff. What's the best lure for redfish? Hard or soft? I mean, it just depends on the conditions, Carl. It depends on what you're trying to do. Um, soft baits are so versatile that you can use them like everywhere, any time of the day. Any conditions, you can use hard baits. They come in so many different colors. Or uh, soft baits, I'm sorry. Soft baits come in so many different colors. And you can just adjust the weight or the hook that you're using. And you can do whatever you need to do with soft baits. You can, you know, they have, uh, you know, various profiles and shapes. You can get crabs, shrimp, fish imitations. You can put a small jig head, lightweight. Yeah, soft bait is the way to go if you just, if you could have one lure, I think. Just get some soft baits and a, some different jig heads, different weights, different shape hooks, like uh, weedless hooks, stuff like that. Fish don't get full. I think fish do. Fish can get full, I think. I just think that they eat a lot more than you think. And if they have the opportunity to eat, they're going to take it because they don't always have the opportunity. Catfishing high spots and techniques. I don't know nothing about catfishing. I'm sorry. I had to get a guest on here to talk about catfishing, Kirk. Hmm. I could. I, I may be able to get somebody to come in here and talk about catfishing. I know some people. Who's calling me right now? Jig head weights and what size to use in certain conditions. Talk about fishing techniques. Yeah, we could talk about that. That's kind of what Matt and Insomniac are on the same same wavelength right here. Yeah, we maybe could do that. Talk about techniques. Yeah, that would be useful, actually. People would probably get something from that. Yeah, see, good like minds think alike. Smart people. We got smart people in the chat. Catfishing. The only thing I know about catfishing is to fish the river. You got the river view. You got uh, behind the Natchez, Algiers Point. <laughs> the best catfish I've ever seen though was down in Venice at the cleaning tables down here. The dude was fishing. The dude was fishing right here at the cleaning tables at Cypress Cove and just jacking like 30, 40 pound catfish every drop. He was using like a four, a four wide, 
uh, what you call that? Like an offshore fishing reel, just jacking catfish. The best bait to use is the one you're most comfortable with. That's right, Danny. Yeah, that's Danny's got some good advice right there. Oh, I lost everything. Did I get my Yamaha fixed? I'm like 99% done fixing my boat. I've been running into like little minor issues. I went to tighten up the the last bolt on the thing and I broke the bolt off and I had to order a new one. So I've been waiting on that. But yeah, I'm almost done with the boat. I should have new videos of that coming out uh, next week. I got like a whole series plan for that. But yeah, I guess next week we're going to talk about fishing techniques. We're going to talk about when and why and how. I guess that's what we're going to talk about. And I think I'm going to get off of here. It's been like 39 minutes already. So it's been nice talking with y'all. Thanks for coming back. Live minnows. What about live minnows? You have to keep them uh, aerated and temperature has to be right. And you have to put ice in them. But yeah, man, that's just like the, the requirements of keeping a fish alive, though. I don't know. 20 pound line is perfect for red fish. You can catch any red that swims with 20 pound line. That's like the preferred uh, line weight, Carl. All right, Chris, have a good night, man. We got to get fishing one of these days. We got to take that boat out. How, when the last time you did that? <laughs> We've been supposed to do that, man. All right, everybody, good luck. Good luck this weekend if you get out. Go fishing, go catch something, come back with some fishing stories for next week. And uh, I'll see you guys out there. I, I don't know where I'm going this week. I'm going to find somewhere to go this week, though. I'm going to find somewhere. All right, everybody, good night. Thanks for coming out. See you all next week, Wednesday at 8 o'clock. Peace.